The Deer Farming Channel is brought to you in part by Record Rack Deer and Elk Feeds. As a deer hunter, I want to know all I can about America's favorite big game animal. That's why I became a deer farmer. Without deer farms, we lose our greatest resource for research and whitetail management. With them, we gain more knowledge than ever before. Join me as we discover the truth about whitetails and meet those who work every day to preserve this great species for future generations. My name is Keith Warren and this is Deer and Wildlife Stories. Today, Deer and Wildlife Stories comes to you from about 50 miles due north of New Orleans, Louisiana, where we'll take you to a deer farm where the deer have made a strong family even stronger. When most people think of Louisiana, they think of the marsh down there by the coast, but uh, this isn't down by the coast. This is about 50 miles north of New Orleans, and this is a beautiful part of Sportsman's Paradise. Tall trees, rolling hills, and a perfect place for a deer farm. My name is F.J. Caminita. I'm with Boom Outdoors Whitetail Farm. We're located in Folsom, Louisiana. The owner of the farm is my brother-in-law, Lance Parrish. I'm his manager, and we've been doing this now for about two years. My brother-in-law, Lance, when he was 19 years old, was injured in an accident, leaving him disabled. We recently went on a hunt at Two Brothers Whitetails a couple years ago. And while we were there, we got to visit their deer farm. And that just opened up a whole world of opportunities for us because we thought, wow, we can do this. Having a deer means a lot to us because, especially for Lance, with his disability, he, he now, when he comes outside in the afternoons, he lights up. He comes outside and he sits on his back porch and he watches his deer out there. And, and it, it just changes his whole demeanor when he gets to see that. The name of our farm is Boom Outdoors Whitetail Farm. And the way we came up with that name is, with Lance's disability, part of it is, is he can't talk, but he loves to deer hunt. And when that gun goes off, the one word he says that says clear and loud is boom. 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 And he gets real excited and he just hollers boom, boom. And that's how we came up with this name. We're fortunate to have this farm because he just enjoys it so much. He gets so much enjoyment out of this, watching his deer, talking about deer hunting. He just lights up. As much as Lance likes to hunt, we're not a hunt preserve. We are strictly a breeder operation, and it gives us a place to get away from the hunt and the, and the rigors of getting Lance in and out of that environment and and he he gets to sit here and watch his deer and and relax and enjoy him that way the deer farming channel is brought to you in part by new dart leading the industry in accuracy all right well i know you haven't been breeding that long and compared to you know say the bollinger brothers but uh but i mean i'm looking at these bucks here and i'm saying what are they two-year-olds uh yearlings really it's seven of them are yearlings and we have the one breeder buck pablo two He's a six-year-old. 
And the and that okay, I can tell which one's a six year old clearly. I mean he is wide. How wide do you think he is? I would venture to say probably about twenty eight inches. <laughs> twenty eight. Okay, now when you got started here in this business, you had to buy your stock from somebody. Yes, sir. Okay. So as far as the but the, but those little guys right here, the yearling bucks, and they're great yearlings by the way. Okay, those all those yearlings were born here, but that breeder buck wasn't born here. You had to buy him from another breeder, correct? That's correct. Um, I bought him from two brothers, Whitetails, mm -hmm. Trey and Brandon Bollinger. And uh, I want to say he came, they bought him from Vtex Whitetails, James Weitenheimer, and then brought him over here before the borders closed. And then they kept him for a few years, and then I bought him last year. And uh, we, we used him a little bit last year, but we're going to use him heavy this year. Well, he is a pretty deer now, and folks, as, as you look at him, you, you heard Vtex Whitetails, James Weitenheimer, and you heard Brandon Trey Bollinger, their, their names. Uh, they're, uh, Vtex Whitetails out in Texas. We went over there, we'd done a show with James over there, and he's got some unbelievable deer, and so that breeder buck right there came from Texas to Louisiana. Now, currently the laws have changed where Louisiana shut the borders down and you can't bring deer into Louisiana. That's correct. Uh, but, but the Bollingers, they wound up acted ahead of time, ahead of the border closure, brought these deer, they were all tested, permitted, and, and fine, and as you can see, healthy, brought them in here, and then the borders closed. And what that did, that really kind of gave uh, Louisiana a head start. I mean, a, a, the ability to really have some great genetics because Louisiana really didn't have a lot of great genetics. And so y'all brought them in, and these offspring that are in this pen right here, these little yearling bucks, I mean, they're direct descendants from that, from right? From that, that's correct, yes. Okay, well, I'm going to tell you right now, I get to see a lot of deer and a lot of, I mean, a, a lot of yearling bucks. I promise you there's not a prettier set of yearling bucks that I've laid my eyes on this season so far than that set right there. And I'm not just telling you. Thank I mean, you. <laughs> I mean they're clean, they're pretty. I mean, I'm looking at those look like what, in my opinion, what deer need to look like. And 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 that's our goal. Our goal is to breed wide, typical bucks, as clean as we can get them, with with nice mass, a little northern influence in them to help get that, and sell them as stocker bucks. Okay. And and we can move them at two years old. They'll be between 160 and 180 class bucks, and we have no trouble getting rid of that. Now, okay. I mean, they move. Now, what about tours? I mean, if somebody wants to come out and take a look at your deer, uh, tell them when is the best time to do it, and how do they go about setting up a tour with you? Pretty much any time is a good time. You just give me a call at 985-373. 1706 and we'll discuss a time whether it's late in the evening early in the morning i hate to move them around in the middle of the day but we, we can work that out and uh I, any time's good we're, we're good with that the deer farming channel is brought to you in part by record rack deer and elk feeds This is our barn. We're real proud of it. We, we got together with Quattro at J4 and he, he built all this for us. We, we got a counter. This is where we mix our milk for the fawns. Pablo's antlers from last year. Look at this. Those nice. Cutoffs from last year. But look at this barn. I want to point some things out. First off, it's air conditioned. Down here in Louisiana, you got to have air conditioned because it can be warm, but uh, insulated all fully blown insulation everywhere and these are the little knockout rooms what happens is when the deer we're going to go over here in a second when the deer already have the uh, sedative in them they're going to go in here and they'll go to sleep and that's where they can be taken out of here and worked on but right here look at here you got a feed room you know, feed room got some screen on it to keep the rodents out of the feed and you got a scale. This is really, really cool. You've got scales. The more data we can get as a deer farmer, the better. And so this is going to give you a lot of good information right here. And the deer are going to come up here, get on scale. You enter what they weigh, and then all of a sudden they come in here. This is where actually you squeeze shoot, drop the floor out from underneath them. You got your hands on them, do anything you want to with them. You can vaccinate, cut their antlers, inseminate, do whatever you want. And then you open it up and you send them on their way. Tell you, uh, for have I know you don't have many deer on your farm, okay? 
okay? But I know you got big plans because I can see the pen layout the way you have it here. I look down, the pens are all open on this one side. So these bucks, literally, they can come out of here and they go anywhere. I mean, they've got the freedom to roam. But you didn't build this for this herd that you've got right now. No. You built this deer farm for the future, didn't you? Exactly. We have 21 pens here. All pens are connected with a series of lanes to the barn. Mm -hmm. And we can get them in the barn, work them, and then send them right back out to the pens they came from or move them to anywhere we want. Um, it was laid out and designed that way. Myself, Quattro Strack with J4 Fence, we got together and we put this together and that's how this turned out. And I'm really satisfied with the way it looks. The, the, the way that this whole system is set out, these deer can be moved around very easily from one pen to another or into the barn and, and, and that's great. But it, in looking at them now, the pens are not really big. Okay, these pens are probably big enough for maybe eight deer, 10 deer, uh, and it won't take you long to be up to that point that literally you're gonna have every one of these pens full of deer. This is correct. And that's the one thing about the white-tailed deer. I mean, you don't start with many and pretty soon you blink your eyes and you got a whole you have bunch a lot. of them. Yeah, we started with six deer when we started. We now have, counting all the fawns, we ride at like 31, 32 deer. All right, well, if you don't mind, I would like to see your does. Uh, I know that you've got some in the bottle. Uh, yes, I, I, I want to see the boys too. All right, <laughs> sounds good. We can do that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. The Deer Farming Channel is brought to you in part by New Dart, leading the industry in accuracy. Lance and Nicholas have had the best time growing up out here on this farm, especially now that we have the deer. It's taught them so much about responsibility, about being accountable. It's taught them about compassion. It's taught them about the circle of life. As much as um, we want every deer to make it, Mother Nature has dealt us um, a couple rough hands and they've got to witness things that, you know, kids that don't live on a farm um, kids that live in a city just don't have the opportunity to see. They love it. They love when the fawns are ready to, to be bottle fed. They're out there all the time helping them. They're going to feed them and they name every one of them. They, they named them after some movie they saw and so they know every day which one they're going to feed. And I don't think there's anything any better for them than being able to see it and be part of it every day. Folks, this is middle of August right now, and the babies, I mean, you AI'd back in May, so many of the babies that you got on the farm are, are getting close to being weaned anyway. Yes, sir. But, but uh, I, I look here, and, and in this pen, who we have? We have, uh, you're talking about as far does. as does? Yeah. We have uh, heavyweights, we have uh, double wide, we have uh, a bullwinkle, and uh, we have some Conan does in here. And uh, I'm going to make, I'm going to stop you out right there. Folks, as you look at these deer, okay, you think hey, it's just a deer. And, and, and I, I agree, they just look like deer. But what makes them really valuable is what goes behind those deer. I mean, their pedigree. Their pedigree. When, when we got into this in doing our research, we, uh, we decided to go with quality rather than quantity. So we started out with six really, really red, really bred does, bred well, uh, a little more expensive than the others. And then as we move along, we do that each year. We buy a few more, a few more quality does. And uh, it showed up in our yearling pen back there. Yeah, it's, and what, what that does is it allows you to bring in a, a different genes, so for genetic diversity. And you're bringing in uh, these new genes from other people that have been very successful in producing other big deer as well. And, and so I, I want to address something. I mean, uh, the, the Louisiana market to me, I was asked the other day by a guy, I said, what do you think the best market to be a deer farmer is right now? And I said, well, I don't know about the best, but one of the best got to be Louisiana. And the reason why I think Louisiana is, if you're watching this show and, and you're interested in deer farming, the reason why it is, it is here uh, is because this is an emerging market. 
I think that what you have here, you've got a good 15 year run on, 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 on things because people in Louisiana have woken up and realized that the only way that you're gonna have good genetics, I should say great genetics on a piece of property, is to deal with a deer farmer. That, and there's right. not enough deer farmers to go around. And literally, he, he, FJ can sell every single deer he's got any time, like any that. Time. That's right, that's right. We, we believe that the doe counts for 51% of what you do on your farm. And, and that's the program we're running. And uh, it, it paid off, it showed us that, that we were right. And we're gonna continue to run it that way. And, and we get calls all the time. I've, I've had calls for breeder bucks. And I'm like, all I have is yearlings. I said, you need to wait a year. I said, and then I'll have some. But for right now, I wouldn't, I'm like you, you, I wouldn't have any trouble at all selling my deer tomorrow if I wanted to. If you're in Louisiana and you want more information on coming out here to boom, Whitetails, give them a telephone number. 985-373-1706. And you may want to come when it's not so hot. Not so hot, right. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. As you've seen on today's show, there's lots of wonderful things that happen on a deer farm, and it's all possible because of a shared love of the white-tailed deer. If you have any questions or comments about deer farming, or if you have a question or comment about the show, look me up on Facebook. I'm Keith Warren, and thanks for watching Deer and Wildlife Stories. What you're about to see is graphic in nature, so viewer discretion is advised. Last August, many of Texas's deer farmers were forced to kill hundreds of perfectly healthy deer in order to test them for chronic wasting disease. To date, approximately 600 deer have been killed, and the killing isn't over. What's worse is that out of all the deer that were killed, not a single one of them tested positive for chronic wasting disease. I don't know about you, but to me there's just something wrong with the picture when you start killing perfectly healthy deer to test them to make sure they're not sick with chronic wasting disease. Now CWD has been around for over 50 years and I'm a believer that CWD, it needs to be managed uh, from science-based management rather than from a political agenda. And I think that we ought to learn from states that have been battling CWD for more than 50 years. And they themselves say that uh, there's nothing they can do to manage it, what they need to do is just monitor it. So again, I think that we ought to base our CWD stuff all on science and not on a political agenda. If you'd like to find out more about chronic wasting disease, let me encourage you to go to the website, cwdmyths.com.